Okay. This should be working fine now. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's do the. I need to pass the links. I always forget the links. There we go. Okay. So while we uh, get set up here, we're going to look through the remaining issues that we have. And they're really kind of project items. They're not really issues. Um, so, okay, so these do line up with this. Okay. So we'll finish this one shortly. And then we'll talk about what we uh, do next. But I don't necessarily want to start that immediately. That's uh, let's uh, make sure. Can I remove these? Delete. Delete. I don't want the PR branches. Uh, I get on my machine. That one's going to go away shortly. That one's going to go away shortly. Okay. Okay. So let's let's go and um, take a look at. So I think today what I'll start on is the kind of friends piece of this. And we'll kind of talk about how we might want to show um, show that. So yesterday we went through the PR. Junica's kindly made a few few uh, uh, changes. Um, we did those PRs yesterday. We pulled them in and into the main PR. And uh, we now have a really nice uh, progress bar for the uh, water consumption. And today we will get this PR pulled in. Uh, Junicus has reviewed it. Um, I wanted to make sure that um, he was able to pull the, the branch down and uh, validate that everything's working as expected and he approved it. So I think we'll go ahead and merge this pull request. So we're merging into development. Then let's confirm merge. And then we're going to delete that branch. We don't want to leave that line out there, right? It's funny, I feel perfectly fine until I start talking on stream. Huh. Okay, so now we that, that's closed that issue. That has moved this one to uh, done. So we have more done here. And uh, we are able to, to pr proceed. So now let's pull development. So we'll update development, that'll pull in the extra components. So now we have the consumption state provider, we have the, the liquid gauge, uh, the cu custom, uh, the, the consumption context, etc. So if we build that, and run that, So, uh, hold on. I have noticed this is very prone to having issues the first start. It's very um, likely to, yeah. So 0% for the day, 800 fluid ounces is our daily target. Uh, a little uh, ambitious, I think. Um, so let's log that we've drunk 24 ounces of water.
Uh, 24 and 800, that's probably not even going to tip the scale of it, is it? Less than 1%. So let's lower this down to 300. Really? We got to reload things? This is working fine yesterday. Oh, there you go, 8%. Huh. What happened there? There you go. Okay, so now it's changing. So I must have just had some caching going on there. <clears throat> Sorry. Um... Okay, so that's that's the current app. Um, so today, the goal will be Let's have a look. So we have, as a user, I should be able to create a friends group. As a user, I should be able to see friends group. As a user, I should see a friend's percentage towards their daily goal. So as, a, as I want to be able to help stay motivated and be reminded to drink water by my friends. So being able to support each other is part of the app. I should be able to invite a friend by entering a name and email. And on doing so, I should be prompted to create a friends group to add them to with a name. Provide a drop down of other friends list, take free text and create a friends group if it doesn't exist. The invite should trigger an email. So, so I think, hi, Mr. Jones, how are you doing? Really? Someone unfollowed me at the beginning of the stream. Awesome. Um. <laughs> Um, so I think that this might be too complicated. Um, uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, what I'm thinking is maybe creating an invite code and sharing that invite code. <laughs> this coffee game, you can go do one now. Oh yeah. Well, you can hear my voice still. My voice isn't any better. I've, I've been, this is now... Two solid weeks. So. I did, um, I did karate last night and did sparring. And, uh, um, my, my cardio was obviously thrown off because of this. And uh, we ended the set, instead of doing the actual, well, I did a few sparring matches, which was hard enough because obviously I'm, I'm fighting, 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 fighting without stopping. And then, um, then we did an eight minute ab session at the end and it was brutal. Like doing, doing sit-ups for a minute is, uh, yeah. That was, um, that showed the cough up. 100 day cough. Oh, this best not last for 100 days. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna keep exercising and uh, uh, trying to uh, continue getting into shape. So, so 
So I'm wondering if this story in particular is a little bit overly ambitious. I wonder if the actual thing we need to do is be able to create an invite code. Um, and then use that invite code to invite friends to the group. Kind of like a Discord, right? Rather than having um, the email explicitly. But the problem with that is we need to be able to sign up. So this is kind of chicken and egg stuff, right? And I think Junicus was mentioned yesterday that uh, maybe taking a look at user sign up. So um, when the first screen is displayed, I'm going to log in. I should see a register link that takes me to a page to register my user. So says I should be returned to the login screen. I think this is a more logical first story. Um, reason being that we need to um, we need to be able to log into that. We need to create a user in the application. Bit title, edit, um, So maybe adding uh, to issue um, advancement. Um, Yeah, I think this is a, a better a better thing to do first. I'm sorry. Because if we can sign up for the application, and then what we can do is we can um let's say um edit. Um I should be able to invite a friend by entering an email. No. So let's change this. Um edit. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike this all out. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to, well, he says he's going to strike it all out, but you can't figure out how to do that. Mark down, strike through. Okay. No. Um, I should be able to friends group friends group should generate an invite code. Um, And creation it should so this is a i i want to make sure that I keep down the path of a splitting up um requests that are um so u i based stuff versus um uh versus uh uh, uh 
API stuff, and I think this has to be API. So labels API. Um, okay. Um, so to be able to, uh, I should be able to create a friends group. So um, new API endpoint for friends group, um, new table for groups, um, the friends group should have a title, and a created by. The owner is the person. So, so this is just the API side of this thing. Um, so it's supporting Markdown. So it doesn't. I want to strike that through because I don't want to necessarily lose it. But well, this is not marked down. So let's remove that. Um, let's create the, so we're going to sign this to me. We're going to move that to uh, in progress. Let's create the um, corresponding item, add item um, as a user. I should be able to add a friends group from the preferences page. Do I want to do it from the preferences page or the log page? Um, sorry. Because the the reality is the um, this page is going to kind of be the the actual right. Your log is going to be your log. Um, I think maybe friends is a group. Yeah, maybe. So, um, group. so let's do that. Let's open that up. Um, um, should be able to see a friends menu option. I'm logged in. Okay, navigate to friends. I should see a um I should see an option to add group. So this kind of gets into, you know, how much should a story do, right? Because this, this should be able to add a friends group. Well, I can't validate about the friends group unless I also query the friends groups. So now I also need the ability to query the friends groups. So, um, adding a group, uh, should pop up a dialogue. Can question that one um, that offers me to give the group a name. When saved, I should see a group appear on the screen and next to each friends group, the invite code will be displayed. Um, 
talk about that later. Obviously, this site isn't going to be live. So, um, oh, this phase is not going to be live. So, showing that friends group isn't going to hurt. But in the long term, you might want to keep that private because then someone would be able to um, get access to UI. <coughs> Sorry. Um, now, this depends upon, uh, depends on number three. All right, so we need to get number three done first. So if we go back to number three, um, this does need to, um, So this this story should include the query because if I'm thinking about it, if I'm going to validate that this is functional, I need an API to say create the friends group, but I need to be able to turn around and query the friends group. So part of this story is to add the query. There's no value in creating a separate story for the query and then kind of hooking things up, right? So from a story perspective, it makes sense to create the APIs responsible for creating and then um, querying. Uh, that thing. So, So let's go and create a new branch. Uh, I think I can delete this one now. All right, we've we've got all the changes. We're good. No, I don't need to update anything. Nothing affected by that. Okay, so back to the API endpoint we go. So we're going to create um issue three apparently um so let's create a new branch um feature three um add friends group so the reason I backed off the idea of having the email or anything, like sending emails, etc., is because that over over complicates the application. It also puts a need for anyone checking out the application to set up SMTP, and and that's just messy. And um, Mr. Jones, I'm sure you can uh, uh, appreciate that as well, right? Um, you know, there's there's added complication if I start messing around with email stuff. Whereas with this way, I can. I can create friends groups. I can create a code, and I can I can build the. Actually, I need to think about that. I need to build the feature to redeem a uh, friends code. Right. Um, so we need a few more issues. Um, as a user, I should be able to join a friends group code. And as a user, I should be able to enter a so two subtle things. This one is the API side of things. And Edit that. 
from us. Um. Right, so a friends group was, is only going to show the people that you've added, right? So um, it's not going to show yours, but you know, cause you're, you've got yours. You just want to see where your friends are, right? Um, sorry. Let me add to the group. Um, if I'm already in the group. Um, so that's just HTTP statuses that we can rep represent that by. Um, new table. And we can use the group, um, the group endpoint to validate that we've been added to the group, right? Um, um, new endpoint for um, for add new API endpoint for query users in group. So right now we've got the ability to add a group and we can see the groups, but we can't actually see the people in the group. So this will be to get the actual groups. Uh, and maybe we refactor that later as an API, but we'll talk about that. See, so can you use markdown for comments, but you can't use markdown for the items. Okay. Or it doesn't support, or it doesn't support straight through. Okay. Um, and then this one is, um, this is UI, right? Um, as a user, I should be able to click a, I should be able to navigate to the friends screen and I should be also, I should be able Okay, so this does depend upon several of the stories, right? So depends on um, three. And twenty seven. Right. So the benefit of doing that is that I'm highlighting for anyone else looking at these stories that you can't just do these without other things, right? So um there's a there's an order these have to come in, otherwise you're gonna break things. Right. So if someone was to come in and say, Hey, I want to do this and, and try and branch the code and do it, they'd have to develop all the features, right? Which would be bad. So I don't want to promote that. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's uh, add friends group. So we've said for this story, we should be able to add a new API endpoint for adding a friends group. We should add a new table for the groups and a new query endpoint for the friends group. So when we add a friends group, we are able to um, get that list back. So let's start with the, the, the data models, right? So I think simply we start with friend group. So do we need friend group? Is it implicit? Right. Um, we have no other concept of group, right? So a group is a friend group by virtue of being there. So we could use the word group. Um, we could use friend group, but then there's no other type of group. Um, so let's just go with group for now. Um, as an identifier, as a name, and it has a it needs a code. There's no need for a description. Um, 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 public int um, this is public virtual is it user no accounts so that's our user our account is our user right um so we have to have an owner, right? We have to have, and we'll have the owner because we'll be logged in, right? Um, so there's our group. So now let's create our migration. Um, add friends group. Okay, so now our add friends group migration is in there. Oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, an idiot. Roll back. No, uh, we need to delete that. You need to add it to the context. Before he could do that, so and again, I, I mean, I could, I could use um, friends group or whatever here. I could use gr uh, fr uh, friend group or whatever friends groups, but it, by by virtue of there is nothing else in the application for groups, right? So using the word friend would just be again just being wordier we know this will understand when we look at groups that that is what that is so let's add that migration again uh add friends group and the migration again it, that's just making sure that we're we're disc discussing it in the right way but it really could be called add groups this should look a little healthy this time there you go Okay, and then we can go to the API and we can update the database using the migration. Just for completeness. There's our groups table. There's our columns. Okay. So uh this will be that and that add group um model and post migration
So we have a model. That's awesome. Let's go and add more code. So I'm actually going to try and write some unit tests here. Uh, concerning groups. When adding a group and group name exists. Um, I gotta remember that I followed a slightly different style here when we came to this last time. I was trying to follow um a more standard practice of unit testing than, than the one I normally follow. So um, the fact here is group is not added, right? So we need an arrange and we need an act. So the arrangement here will be we need a service um, calls new group service, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to say service dot um, add new group, and this is going to be um, existing group name, and then um, what we want to do um, here actually is var result. And then result dot status. So we'll use the uh, the adult result class to uh, represent this. Um, and then we're not going to add in extra libraries. Result dot equal, and then this is going to be a result status uh, dot conflict. So that's what we're expecting to happen. So let's create a group service. And then let's create a new method. And this returns a result. Um, okay. And then that returns. Okay, so all I'm really doing here from the unit testing perspective is I'm just giving it enough reason to exist, right? So I can build the rest of the features on. So yeah, we got a passing test. Um, let's move that now to our application. So this needs to go to application services, okay. So we have our group service now, and we should still have a passing test. But we know we know there's nothing, there's no value in doing what we're doing there. So um, when adding a group, and group does not exist, fact group is added, right? So our range is going to look very similar. Uh, act is going to look very similar. Uh, status <coughs> right. Now this is not necessarily good testing because all I'm saying is it returns true, right? So if I run the tests. I'll get one pass, one fail. So I need to make this pass now. Um, but it's it's enough to uh, to build on. So what are we going to do to make this pass? Well, we need... Um, we need access to the database. And... We created this horrible repository 
before, um, which we're going to continue. Um, the reason why is this might not be best practice, right? Well, it's not best practice just to create these repositories this way. It just is just kind of dumping more logic in big files, uh, more behavior, etc., in big files. So I don't like this method of doing things. Um, it does keep the queries and the, the interaction with the database abstracted from the service. The service just needs to be able to call these things, which later on we could actually swap out and do something cleaner. So for right now, let's create an I group repository. Right. And we're going to have, um, what do we do when we add account? Yeah. Void add. Um, so did I do? Yeah, just added it that way. Group, group. All right. Oh, that's an interface, that's why. Okay. So let's implement our well, actually, we don't need to implement the group repository for the test to pass. We just need to have the interface. So now on our group service, we need an I group repository. Right. And then in here, um, we need to say group name. name we don't need group name because we're adding a new group so we don't need to be redundant in our naming um let's do and by the way if anyone's watching and has questions about what i'm doing if you want to talk about it if you want to push back on anything i'm doing or criticize feel free this project is aimed at being a viewer friendly project which means that I, I am completely okay with discussing it, discussing the design decisions. This is not a best practice. This is just a path. Um, so I don't want to make people think that I'm trying to um, show, you know, here's how, how to do this. Um, this is a, a project to grow into. So if you are watching and uh, wondering what I'm doing, please feel free. Um, so here, um, we now need to add new group. So right, that will work kind of, um, for this test, it would work, right? But um and then we return okay right all success sorry but now we'll have some problems with other things um and our other tests will need to change right because our other the test because when it exists we now have no check for that so we're not returning conflict so we're gonna have to add a few more things here so in global, we have um, substitute, so that's good. So we can create a mock repository. So we can do substitute.4i group repository, right? I can inject our repository there. Or I can inject everything else but the repository because I can't type. And Uh, let's do the same on our other test. Make that pass. I'll make it build. Right now, one's going to pass, one's going to fail. Right, so now we flip them. So now we have a reason to um, validate this one. Right, so now we need to do a query. Um, right, um, so. Um, let's do group, get by name. And if you're watching this and, and screaming at the screen saying, hey, you're doing something wrong, um, 
you know, I, I'd, I'd really appreciate the conversation. Um, I know what I'm doing wrong here. Um, but what I'm doing is trying to build the unit test the way that realistically I should do. Um, right. So it's not up for this, the test to actually dictate this, but the add new group should check to see. So, um, what I should be doing is that. And then if group is null, right? Um, actually it is not null. Return result or conflict, otherwise that, right? Um, here, I need that to be that. Um, sorry. So now if we run, we'll still get a failure because our test isn't actually, our repository isn't configured for that. So in repository dot get by name. So now we need to create a variable. So string. Actually, it's still in any range. Const string uh, group name equals existing group name. That's going to go up there. That's going to go there. That returns new group. Right. So now when we run the tests, Everything's, everything's passing. We, we've obviously got something working now, right? But we don't because we don't have all we validated is that we return OK when we call add new group. We haven't validated that the group's been added, that the group's been added for us, etc. So let's go and add um, when group um, name exists for different user group is added. Right. So again, I'm trying to add in the unit test to validate the scenarios. I'm not trying to overthink the actual test. So it's very simple right now. Now I have an, a user assigned to it, but I don't have a user assigned to it right now. I've got no need to assign the user. So each test will, each subsequent test will just build on top of the rest, right? That's the point. Arrange act. So bar repository, bar service, right? Now, if I do that, it's not going to matter because um, I'm not passing in the user, right? So I need to make this break. So I now need to add in who I am, right? So we have um, I've been mean, the ads are running. I will take a quick break. I'll be right back.
Okay, sorry about that. Oh, okay. I'm going for a quiet day today. Okay, so we have... Uh, where was I going before? Yeah, that was... So we're going to add in the user. Let's figure out what we usually pass in. So when we get preferences, we go and get the user ID, which is an int. So we're going to use this method again. Um, so we need a user ID. Let's create var user ID equals... Again, I'm using... Um, um, I'm using numbers that, that stand out. If I just use one, then there's a potential that I could end up with. Um, um, confusing the number. So if we go to add a new group, and now let's do um, int user ID. So our testing in the past still, um, our other tests are now broken, but we, we're worrying about this one particularly right now. So get by name isn't enough, right? Because get by name just takes a name. Um, but it, it it's still get by name, even if it's for the user. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pass down that that parameter, right? Um, user ID, right? So now, with that done, what we're going to do is um, This test makes sense. Morning, Rambling Geek. How you doing? So, the the problem with this, the test makes sense, but the actual code can't represent the problem. Right? Um, because I'm not... I'm not mocking the storage here, right? Um, I'm not validating that I've actually added anything. Um, um, again, I'm validating uh, certain behaviors. I'm not validating the actual not validating that I actually call add necessarily. Well, I am by by calling this, I'm calling add new group on the service. And internally, right, what I, I know will happen is um when I assert what I should be asserting is repository dot um add. So repository dot received uh add arg dot is uh group and a group name um and g dot id uh owner id equals user id right so i want to validate that i also want to validate that the the result of the the call was true but i'm not actually able to test what this is doing right it is a specific thing but um do i change so I could go to here and say, okay, well, get by name doesn't need that, right? And then we get the group by the name. And if it's not our user, then that's fine. But that could also now return many, right? Because I could, you know, I could find a, a, a thousand examples, you know, after after a while of, you know, my, my best friends or, you know, my buddies or whatever you want to call them, right? You could find a lot of those groups. So having no filtering on this for this group for this user doesn't make any sense but it also means that this test doesn't make any sense so it's not adding value here um 
So when adding a group and a group name exists, um, this is going to make more sense to have the user ID in there, right? Um, than this one. So we're going to delete this test because there's no actual value in it. And what we're going to do uh, for this user. So we're going to change these tests appropriately because that's all we can test. Now, if we were if we were capturing the storage, etc., we could validate that we can't get the second one. Um, but the actual behavior that we're testing um, would actually be a data test, right? Um, because we'll be testing the actual implementation of the repository to verify that um, the way this is the, the way this code is designed so far. Good morning, Mr. Anholm. How are you doing? Um, so let's um, uh, const in user ID equals thousand and one um, user ID returns new group. And then that's uh, user ID, uh, owner ID, and uh, name equals group name. Good. Another update to my template. I released a new get.net template to easily spin up new projects. Oh, nice. Nice. You, you haven't streamed recently, right? You haven't streamed any of this. Um, I'm going to do user ID. So what we have, one of our data here is that, um, so this test should pass, right? We now need to make the same changes over here. Uh, so we could do, I'm not, but should. <laughs> Yeah, especially if you're really to get packages of it, that sort of stuff. Const string group name. Um, so again, what we're doing here is, so I'm not, you know, I'm not maybe following great practices for the unit testing here, but what I am doing is kind of testing within the limits of, of the way that the code's currently designed. Um, and again, we want to validate that repository dot add uh, repository dot received uh, add um, arg dot is a group. And that group should have a name equals group name and g dot owner id equals user id, right? Thank you. I wonder what services hit NuGet on a daily basis. Because, like, not not being offensive, but really, two hundred sixty five downloads. Right, my mine have the same problem. Right. Right, five hundred nine, five seventy four. Right, there's no way. So something has to be kind of pulling these down, and uh, and uh, like um, what are they called um, not digesting. You know what I mean. Well, there's no way this has been downloaded five hundred times. So it it looks great, awesome, but you know. Then you don't download it every time, so yeah. I have one point five million dollars told they can't hold me, yeah. Bots. Well that's one thing, I think it's bots that pick them up and, and um duplicate them or whatever. But it it climbs as well, right? So it's happening every day.
Okay, so these tests, one shall fail. Right, because with this one now, um, test that, and then this one tests that. Group is added. Expected to receive a call matching that, but we don't have that because we didn't add. When we added the group, we don't set an owner ID. Owner ID equals uh, user ID. Right. Do you like the old put in NuGet Package Explorer? Yeah. Yeah. Do I have? Oh, it, oh, it's embedded now. Nice. I thought it was a... Uh... That's pretty cool. We can do that now. Holy moly. That's pretty cool. This is all my opinions and what I like to see in the project. Absolutely. Nice. Very cool. So that way you can spool up an application pretty quick and yeah. Huh. <coughs> That's pretty cool. Unroll mate file. Oh nice. I did, uh where did that go? Entry PS1. Not a lot of power shot. Oh, yeah, I see it though. <laughs> First setup, right. To do, not implemented yet. <laughs> That's cool though. I like that. And honestly, like I can see the value of doing that in, in something like um it, uh I've been contemplating with the Liquid Sky project what what does it mean like the number of things that I'm setting up per project um that I need every time I start a new component of the system. Um how do I make sure that that's logical and consistent? And that's why I was kind of with the mass transit stuff, I tried to make it so that I could have a reusable method. But the reality is the mass transit stuff is kind of per project. So there's no benefit in doing that. But, you know, if there's a structure that I can follow that I can just pull the project, that would be, that's where that sort of stuff would be highly useful. Um, maybe that's worth a time investment as well. Especially as, as well, if I'm doing any de deployment stuff, um, having that consistent project style would probably help a lot. You know, because there's things that I do. If it's an API endpoint thing, right? I need to have, I need to have it be able to be registered with the with the uh, with the gateway. I need to have um, more likely it's got Kafka or Mass Transit and or both. Um, it's got the database. It's got it's you know. Uh, mediator configuration, etc. There's, there's all sorts of stuff in there that, uh, like the outbox and stuff, right? There's, there's things in there that would be good to build. So, Copper Beady, hello, how are you doing? 
our things. Okay, so we add a group. So what else do we do we need, right? So we have we need a code. Right. So um so this one does add, right? Um being better. I'll pause well with you. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hope things aren't too bad. So, <sighs> what do I want to do here? How do I want to generate this? So for anyone who hasn't seen this project before, this is a, a shared project anyone has access to, right? It's a stream stream only project um, aimed at just providing some um, some learning materials for anyone uh, looking at how to work with GitHub, how to work with pull requests, how to work with Blazor or APIs, etc. Um, so there's lots of options. Um, right now, what I'm doing is that I'm adding the ability to um add a new friends group and what i'm looking at right now is how to generate a a unique code i think like six characters um makes sense um Now, do I want to do something like generate a random code? Like, is it harmful if anyone gets hold of the code? Or do I want to take like the hash of the group name and the user ID and take six characters out of that? It's kind of what I'm considering right now. Like, do I go really simple or do I go, right? So if I do int user ID equals 1001, string group name equals our world. And then do user ID uh, I probably want to generate some random characters. Letters might be. <laughs> 15 years ago, wow. It doesn't need to be. Overly complicated. It just needs to be a quick, like, RNG. This stuff is not <laughs> wow. Uh, Pax, how you doing? <coughs> um, done at eight. You can use star 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 FFLE. It uh, censored the uh, the word there.
Uh, random shared shuffle. Random dot shuffle. Ah. Huh. Interesting. I have not used that before. I need to buy link, but I need to buy upgrade link pad eight. So let's create. Um, doesn't need to be. Um, when generating your code that mm. let's do public plus That doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. So if I did um, that can't do that because it'll do it in place. So I need a copy of that though to do it. Right. So Because that will not that will not work. Okay, so you read only spam. But it needs <laughs> yeah, it knows what I want. What does innumerable repeat mean? What does that do? The value to re be repeated, the number of times to repeat the value in the generated sequence. So we generate the, the sequence six times. And then randomize it. That seems even less efficient. Um. Hmm. 
Yeah, no. So to use a shuffle, I need a copy of this. I need a copy of the actual array, right? Because if I just do characters there, that won't work because that's not. Well, that's a static string anyway, right? So I could I could feed it as, but it'll try and rearrange the original array. So that would be bad. Why is that allowing that? That doesn't return anything because it's meant to shuffle that. So that that would be bad. I mean, it, if it worked, it would actually reshuffle every time, but. That'd be weird. Because then I could do return characters dot take. Um, Not no, but whatever. Yeah, actual true. Because I would imagine that's not changing that. Let's see what that is. Uh... Two arrays create a copy. Yeah, that's not doing the uh, thing I want to do. Okay, so that will give me a copy of it. Which is an ideal, but I mean, it's workable. Um, that's healthier. How I write code. Just thinking of it as an array still, and it's not. Well, that's not going to give me the. No, that's not going to give me the thing, is it? That's going to give. That's going to give me A B C A B C. Um. Right, because that's just, that's going to give me the original array. Right. So we need to do. Um, this needs to be var characters equals that, and then pass in that, and then take that. Um, characters. No. Okay, I was going to say. Um, why does that... Oh, so two take, take gives it as it puts it back as an enumerable and then... Hmm. That seems less than memory efficient. Uh, 
I mean, it's doing what I want it to do, <laughs> but it's not. I'd want to look at that. Okay, so I call three times in a row. It's not not ideal, but it's the I'm gonna go with that for right this second. Um application. No. Move to another file. And then we move that to another to scope. Don't need a partial test. Hi, Smub. How are you doing? Um, Twitch is uh, Twitch doesn't like .NET. It seems um, you break that up into into what word is the uh, first one? Because it's giving me star 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 t items. So again, this this isn't this isn't the end of the world, right? If it gen if it's slightly inefficient, this is the sort of stuff that, as as a viewer, you're more than welcome to go and take a look at that and propose a different way of doing it, right? That's that's kind of what this project is about. So I'm not trying to spend great deals of time trying to think through the problem more the uh um now um the downside to the way i've just done this is i can't now control that generator because i'm not injecting the group generator the, the code generator right um what i could do is create an abstraction around it right um so in here i could create an i code generator interface and inject that into the application which means that i could control the code um maybe that's the right way to do that because then i can actually dictate that it's generated this giving it the code that i expect it to give it um, and it's assigning that value um, if i leave it to chance if i leave it to randomness um, then i'm basically in these tests in the test where i'm adding i'm basically going to say okay well yeah i can I can call add, uh, and I can get a code. Um, so, but the problem is I can't have a static method on there. So this code generator, if I uh, make it that, um, this this can still be static because I don't want to create uh, an instance of this per, right? Um, I can extract an interface, add code generator, right? Um, move to another folder and tracks right like that now in here right i have a problem because i'm going to have to create an actual var uh, code gener uh, generator new code generator and that's that sh should still pass optional seed yeah yeah again i mean for for what we're doing here this isn't this isn't uh right if if two if two codes are not unique um it is okay because for the user the likelihood is that they are going to be unique so it looks like shuffles pretty effective um at shuffling that array
yeah, if I control the seed. But I, I think for this, um, I think in terms of unit testing, it does make sense. Yeah, um, to pass in to control that um, I code generator, right? Right. Um, and now we need to go over here. Uh, so our service now needs a, a generator. So var generator equals substitute dot for I code generator. Um, That's that. I'll just copy that. Over there. Actually, we do need that there. Um, and then generator. When adding a group and a group naming exists for this user, group is not added. So the generator isn't going to matter. Um, so again, here, what we're doing is we're going to, we need to verify this properly. So repository dot did not receive dot add arg any group. Right. So validating that and generator did not receive dot generate code. Right. So we're validating those scenarios. Um, Nothing like C drive running out of space to break the VSID or. <laughs> um, yeah. That's <clears throat> why I normally, sorry if uh, the coughing comes through the microphone, I do apologize. That's um, so why I normally install IDEs on D drive. The first thing I do is get a large uh, secondary drive. I think this one has. Yeah, terabyte, terabyte. Yeah, so smart to your point. Yeah, you are you are right, right? Uh, there I'm what I'm testing is um I'm testing the inbuilt shuffle, essentially. Um but you know, it's more for me that was just more validating that the method works. So I'll leave the test there just because it helps document that it's gonna do that. But you are right. I'm, essentially, I'm testing an inbuilt method there. Um, Docker went rogue. Ooh. I hope that never happens on my machine. Um, so on this one, our generator... Um, generate code returns... Um, on string generated code so for anyone um looking at this project for the first time um anyone new to the stream anyone seeing this project this project is not meant to be a best practice this project is meant to be a work in progress right so i'm going to do some things that are kind of cutting corners or i'm going to do some things that are probably not really good design um, the goal of the project is to try and build upon that and use it as a discussion point for why we might organize things differently so some of the things I'm doing, I do deliberately because I want to make sure that A, they're doing, I'm ha it's being done, but also that it's not necessarily the way I would do it in, in the long term. It's just more, hey, this gets me moving forward and allows people to see the code and kind of get into that. So um, this project is a pure stream project. Um, I do not work on this off stream. Um, it is a... TVD friends, um, you know, so the idea is, is an application for tracking, um, my water consumption throughout the day and G dot code equals generate code. All right. So again, that having that interface does allow me now to control that. And I, I can validate that I'm adding, uh, the right thing. So this will fail because the code won't match. I really shouldn't have Discord up while I'm actually streaming because my brain does not process that right. 
I see the movement in the corner of my eye and go and read <laughs> Discord messages. There you go. Um, so when we add a new group now, our code should be our code generator dot generate code. Um, we also need to validate data added, so let's let's make sure we do that in a second. So now that group is added, and they added should be uh, so the thing I don't like about this style of testing is I'm kind of implicitly testing everything um, they added um, it's greater than date time at UTC now. Um, we'll come back around on this in a second and I'll show you. Um, and add seconds, uh, minus 10, right? So it should be greater than 10 seconds of now, right? So again, I'm just making sure it fails before I actually go and fix the code. And then, um, they added equals UTC now, um, there, there is a new interface in done a or new uh, piece in done a so now that passes um the date time provider and we did use that in the um we use the uh time provider the fake time provider when we are controlling when we're doing the, the logs because we needed to know right that we get for today so we're very much controlling that <coughs> Is it necessary right the second? No, um, I'm not going to go and jump through the hoop of injecting the time the date time provider into the class. All right. It's one of those things where I think that that kind of blurs the lines as well, because in reality, I always want to use date time UTC now, right? I don't want to do anything other than that. So to be able to test it, I've got to inject a time provider. Um, and that, that time, pro that's kind of one of those situations where you are actually, um, you are actually changing your code to accommodate testing, um, which is generally not a great idea. But either way, we, we have validate, we can add. So, um, add, so let's do this. Let's do uh, code generator, code generator, code generator. Uh, um and this is very limited obviously and now right now i'm only generating six characters um it's hard coded to six that could be changed you could ask for more um generate random um string for numeric string um or using string code um Um, group service, um, tests, and added group service and put tests around So there's one piece we're missing right a second. Um, so I could I could actually say, yeah, that's working fine, except we don't actually have the wire up to the actual database. So it's the one downside to this style of testing, right? So if I was doing integration testing, this would be a little cleaner because then I would actually be able to run an integration test to validate them actually adding to the database. Um, that is a, a while away, All right? Um, so right in a second, I've got the I group repository, but I don't actually have an implementation of group repository. So let's go and create our group repository. And again, I don't have any tests on this, which is I group repository, right? Which is another challenge. So the way I've done this so far is I inject factory into the into the repository, right? And in here, I'm going to just say. Um, yeah, I'll do. And 
Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> mm, sorry. Um, so I, I, I went on brand today and made sure I actually had water to drink while developing water drink water. So we have a repository. We have our, our application piece. So we need an endpoint now. Um, let's create um, groups as an endpoint. And we need post. So this is the one slight deviation, I would say, from, from this project. I would say that this is the the difficult deviation. So if you're new to using APIs in .NET, this is the one very unfriendly feature. Um, because if you're looking at creating APIs, you, you, you're offered two primary options. Those are using controllers or using minimal APIs. And I'm not, I'm neither, I'm neither using, <laughs> I'm not using either, sorry. Um, but that's just a preference thing, right? That That's a, we could develop this differently, but I just didn't do it. So what I'm using is fast endpoints. So here I need, um, well, I need to get a better keyboard, public class parameters. Um, I just need to be name, right? And, um, this needs to be an endpoint. That receives post dot parameters returns what does it return <coughs> sorry um returns okay or bad request is what we need um hi Junicus, how you doing okay and uh conflict um, I'm not bad request. Um, so, so, Julie goes just catch you up. Um, looking at creating, uh, being able to create a friends group. Um, I still, I still deviated from where I needed to be anyway. Um, not what I intended to do. Um, um, change this out a little bit because initially it was going to be an email request, etc. But what I decided to do is create an endpoint that will allow us to create a friends group. And it will give an invite code, and that invite code can be shared. Um, a bit cleaner, less email, uh, less problems. So that's what I kind of focus on for today. So the idea is the this is the API component, um, and then the ne the uh, UI component is in here somewhere. Um, before going to actually doing the friends group, I think the next step would be to do the uh, user registration. Uh, reason being. Yeah, I think the six character like Discord link style is is a is a good path, and it stops having SMTP problems or you know email general problems. Um, and then I think the next story up will be to do the register because obviously now we need to be able to register a new user and be able to do that. So I think that would be the next story up there before moving to the actual uh, consume the endpoint. So this story is actually. Uh, creating the endpoint for put, uh, for creating the friends group. Um, we create the table. We've got the we're creating the endpoint now, and then we'll create a new query endpoint. Um, so actually put some unit tests in today uh, for this. Um, not perfect, but it kind of works. Okay, so this is the post. And API groups. Um, and then it's not anonymous. It's fine. And then we need 
and it is an execute because it actually returns something. And then we're going to do, um, we need to inject. So, you know, in the others, we've injected the actual services. So we're going to continue that path for right this second. Um, yeah, this is just the creating a new group. That's group service. Right. Bar result equals group service to add new group. Um, now, we do need this part. I think it's time to uh, refactor this a little bit into uh, an extension method. Infrastructure. Um, okay, so what I'll do is static, public, static, int. Well, we don't have a claims principle. Right, we have a, oh, we do have a claims principle. Okay, so we can get that. Right. Um, so now we'll do uh, so if user dot get user ID bring a zero. Hold on, is, oh, that'd be awesome if that worked. <laughs> oh, it does work. Um, there we go. Um, what does that actually want? Okay, I can go with that. Um, um, sorry, I was focused on this. Um, hi Merlin, sorry, thank you very much for the luck. Uh, maybe Richard the Creator is a member while at it. Um, I've been playing around with Maui Blazer recently and I'm kind of liking it, but I'm also angry about some things. Hot Reload is definitely not a thing. It's a myth. Yeah, it makes sense. Oh, wow, pre-rolls already. <coughs> oh, ads, rather. My apologies if you're in ads. So, I do have a separate story for adding to a group. So, the actual group itself, this is creating the group. Um, we'll have to do that as part of the other story, I think. I think it's, uh, it's better to do it that way. Um, I don't like the pattern much in there. Sorry. Okay. So now let's go to the program and let's add the necessary um, builder.services that add scoped. Oh, 
group service. Yeah, right now this is creating a group. I actually did create a separate story for adding, uh, joining a friends group, etc. So this one will create the new table. Um, so this would be the first time we'd actually need to make sure that the user is added to the group. So. Um, yeah, I'll make it separate. Because you are implicitly part of the group by virtue of having your user ID assigned, the, being the owner of the group. So we can talk about how we achieve that and, and that once we get to that story. Um, we also need builder.services to add singleton i code generator code generator. So we've got the group service, we've got the code generator, we need a repository as well. Builder.services to add transient i group repository. Does that need to be transient? It doesn't really hurt. So it should. How does this work now? Uh, water drip water. Login. Okay, so we can log in. Okay. Start the API project up. Uh, so what does a group entail? Right now, name, owner, and invite code. Right. Um, members would be would be an extension of that. So the the group members would be the separate piece. But yeah, it'd be uh right now the actual group table is just the name uh, and the owner and the uh, code. Um, the idea would be that group members would be a uh, separate table. And it's implicitly friend group because there's only that type of group, right? There's no, there's no other types of group. So I've not overly expanded and called it friends group everywhere. Okay. So test, uh, I think that changes to that. Um, ah. Uh, test that nowhere. Dot com test and our token, and let's add a new request. Post yes, local has seven two four five API groups of bearer. Body add request. Oh, uh. That got all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Have a look at that migration. Yeah, it got all the way down and then came back. Add request. Um, date time, so it's a text field there. Okay. The auto increment, that's fine. Um, let's have a look. 
So I randomly click on things. Okay. So we have a user ID. We go into there. Oh. <laughs> it worked, it just didn't. Okay. No group. Okay. Okay, so it's just that I was checking against status code, and that must be a, uh... huh, okay. So if we go and look at the database, uh, we can go to groups, and there's our groups, and there's our unique codes. Our owner ID, and our added. So let's go, uh, we need one more implement, right? So, uh, let's do this. Da, da, da. Add an extension method. So, I get user ID. Plains principle. Um, Add implementation of group repository. Uh, add endpoint di endpoint for creating group and configured di for repository. Service code generator. Okay. So we have that, we have that, we have that. We can refactor the code out. The only thing I don't like about this style, by the way, is the fact that it doesn't. It sets this variable. This variable is now accessible down here. So it doesn't, doesn't read as nicely as I'd like, but I kind of get the reason why. Right. But it does prevent us from calling it multiple times. Right. Or setting a variable like var user ID equals this and then testing it. So I kind of do like the inline nature of it. Pattern matching. Mm, I don't know. So uh the the one thing i wanted to do as part of this story as well is i, I did want to add the ability to list the groups i think that's a useful feature um now that's a query so i don't normally um thank you for the follow uh Mihalo? welcome anyone new to the stream you're more than welcome to ask questions this project is aimed at being a viewer friendly project um, i only work on this project on stream um, i accept pull requests if you've not done a pull request before if you've not done uh 
if you've not done .NET code before, it might be a little bit harder. But uh, the entire project is aimed at being friendly to the stream, right? So I hope again all the all the uh, the YouTube videos that back this up, they're all there under a playlist. Um, we discussed the design on the stream. Very little bit gets discussed in the Discord um, off stream um, um, right now. But you know the entire project is aimed at being viewer friendly. So uh, you're more than welcome to ask questions. No, this is this is uh, what this stream's about. And I work on this stream on Mondays and Tuesdays, uh, on this project on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, the rest of the week I do work on a slightly more complicated project. Uh, thank you for the follow for now. Welcome. But you know, the, the code is there. You're more than welcome to have a look. Um, it should be easy to check out and build and run on your own. Um, and uh, any feedback you have, is uh, more than welcome. So let's just put one more thing in here. Uh, we need a get endpoint. This is to get the groups, right? Uh, endpoint without request, right? Um, and this returns a um, Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> Sorry. Again, it's it's harder for me to uh I get to the mute button over there. Um Okay, so this This isn't exactly what I want to do. Right, so the application services so far. So if we look at our gets, our get of preferences, we use the service, right? We wrap everything up in the service. <laughs> yeah, you miss, you missed the stream defaults. It's okay. I understand. Um, so we do have um, uh, view models. So there is a view models folder. So we'll think we'll do that. That we'll create a group view model. Uh, and this will have public string name, public, that's a good idea, um, the, the, the code, um, um, public in ID, we probably do need the ID, we want to delete the group or whatever. Um, actually, that's a that's a down the line thing, but the likelihood is we need that anyway. Um, if we were, if we depending on how we implement um, the actual view of the groups, so we need a name, the code. We know who we are, so we're the owner. So the intention right now we. we we're not going to see other people's view model, uh, other people's groups. So there's no, it's implicit. Yeah, uh, no, I think I think having the ID in there is cleaner. Uh, member account, let's not do that right this second. We don't need member account. It's a nice idea. It's good that it offered it. Um, it's fun that it understands that this group means people. It's kind of uh, interesting that it's already inferring that behavior. And then our group service, we're going to need um, public enumerable group view model, uh, get groups, int user ID. Um, our repository here doesn't have method there yet. Uh, so let's do that, and then our well, group groups equals. Well, should I get groups? And again, this is a lot of this code is not meant to be like 
it's not ideal code. It's code that we can come back around and look at how we might refactor it later. A lot of this, so don't take what I'm doing here as being uh, good design, because it certainly isn't. Uh, that can be any when you do membership, as that should get probably get my groups and groups I'm a member of. Yeah, so we can talk about that later on. Uh, get groups for this user ID. Um, so our group service has our uh, a group repository now needs to implement that method, and then there's our groups. Um, actually, mm, there's a there's a flaw with this. That should not be iQueryable. That should be iEnumerable. And the reason being is I want to, I want to enumerate that before I return it. Um, if I return it as an iQueryable and then try and use it, it's going to break because my context is scoped to this method. That will create a problem. Okay, so now we don't want the repository in here. That's that's not good. We want the we want to have that gone. Um, public override configure um, get API groups. Um, this this injects an I uh, injects a groups service. And then this returns Do we want a response? Do we want Yeah, we, want, we want that. We don't need a response object specifically. Mm. Group service. None of this is asynchronous right now, by the way. So if um, user that get user ID is not return Is that oh ask dot from result a request no it's not like that because that's an actual I result why should that matter that shouldn't matter okay that's why uh, return no that should be nullable. And then that should be user ID. And I do have to get going. That should just be the type result. Group. Mm. 
where does user come from? Uh, user comes from, uh, we've got the token. So it injects a claims principle. So user is the claims principle. Um, so this is, by default, this is authenticated. So we know that user exists and get user ID is just an extension that looks at the claims principle and gets the user and then gives us an ID. Um, does it make sense to make that nullable? That should be... Wait, is that not that? It's going to say that's going to complain. That's that. I mean, in general, it's better practice to return an empty array anyway. Oh, an empty. Yeah. Well, I don't need to do complete tasks because I'm going to return. I don't, I don't, I want to return an empty relation. <laughs> I mean, that is if the user is not valid. Let's just go to, uh, hmm. we'll discuss that another time. Nah. We'll get into that discussion later as to the benefits and, and what that means. Because right now, nothing we're using is async. So we do benefit quite heavily from it. Okay. Um, so I should be able to run this. And um, let's say this is um, a group. Um, this is going to be list my groups. Is that a new folder? Groups. So we should have to do... Again, the, the, a lot of this project is aimed at being a growth project. It's not meant to be, here's a perfect application. It's meant to be, this is a rough application. What can we change about it? How can we design it differently? What should we do differently? Why should we do it differently? Right. So the entire intent is to be So remember what I was talking about before. So as enumerable doesn't doesn't break the iQueryable chain, so it doesn't enumerate the actual list. Um, and if I enumerate that in the actual call from the service, then I'll end up with uh, the same problem. So there I need to enumerate it to get the list of things back I want. Huh? Really? So we have these ready. We have three, three groups. Come on, I didn't mean to F11 into select. Oh no. Um, yeah. Right, so this is because we're not returning actual result. And I've called it handle. Now execute. Okay. So fast endpoints has two methods, handle and execute. Handle 
is if I just want to do something, I don't want to necessarily deal with returning an object, then I use handle. If I want to return something, I use execute. There you go. So that's just a, a, a quirk that I need to get more, more and more used to. Um, that's because I'll let the code uh, auto fill. So we can go here, we can say, let's add, um, you know, new friends. We can add that, we can go here. We have our new friends now. So, and there's our invite codes. So, that completes this story, right? Um, so, we're able to um, create a friends group. We get an invite code. Um, friends group should have a title. The owner is the person who created the friends group. Um, and then we've got the table and the, the query, right? So that is that story completed. So we can stop running that. Again, you're more than welcome to check out the code. You're more than welcome to tinker with some of these things. Um, I'm always open to discussion about what you would do differently, why you would do it differently. Um, this is deliberately built in a very clunky way that is going to, uh, it should solicit discussion at some point, right? That's the entire intention. There's, there's, um, doing architecture documents today. Hi, Napalm. How you doing? What are we building? Okay, so this project is my Monday and Tuesday stream project. So this is water drink water. Um, this project is aimed at being a viewer friendly stream project. It's intended to create discussion, talk about design, offer opportunities for people to contribute um, in a variety of ways. Um, one of those ways would be putting UIs. So if you've if you want to learn more about using APIs, we're, we're gradually building a more complicated API that you can put a, a, a fresh UI on. Um, we are also, um, you know, using some unit testing. We're using a little bit of, we're using a little bit of everything right now. Um, the application is not meant to be clean. It's not meant to follow any particular architecture, more a, constant exploration and discussion point project. So I work on this on Mondays and Tuesdays. So let's see if it'll start up right now. So what we've worked on today is adding the ability to track friends groups. So um, if the application starts up, okay. I've noticed that the first time you go and log in after changing the database, things don't always work correctly, but we'll uh, we'll come back on that later. Although that might actually be me trying to uh, update the UI. When you log in, yeah, it's an initialization problem. So we got a quirk there, a bug with Blazor, um, the order in which we initialize the screen. So the idea being that I can go in here and I can set my target for the day, my target uh, liquid consumption for the day. Thank you for the follow up, Napalm. Um, and then in the log screen, I can say, okay, I want to log, I've just drank 12 ounces, right? And then we see this change. Um, if we reduce that to 250 fluid ounces, we'll see it change more because the percentage of our daily consumption. So what we're working on now is the ability to include friends in this. So the goal would be you have a friends menu here. When you click on friends, you can add groups of friends and you can share that group, uh, a code with your friends to say, Hey, go and add, add, join this group. 
and then the intention would be that you have a list of friends and you can see their percentage towards their daily goal. You never see their daily goal because it shouldn't be about who can drink the most water, just who can hit their targets in the day, right? So friendly uh, guide. And then you should be able to like nudge and we can introduce things like signal R and stuff down the line for more real-time communication, um, do nudges and stuff. So this is just one sample UI. Um, the goal being that, you know, if you wanted to come along and develop a, a, bla a another Blazor or a client, or you wanted to develop a, like your alternative version of the UI, if you wanted to develop a um, React client, etc., you could do that and do a pull request and we'll join that in. And then we can see the different ways people have implemented the clients. Um, so kind of following this standard of, I call it blazor.webassembly.tbd. So if someone wanted to do an Angular client, they could do Angular dot initials of that person um but we've got some unit testing in here we've got some different uh, architecture pieces so it's really is intended to be a project for everybody to tinker with uh and you know we can learn as we go nice i haven't messed much with blaze yet i'm a full stack cloud engineer worked on some front end in my career mostly c sharp on aws and azure built a bunch of apis over my career etc currently principal dev at a medical device company working on surgical robot robotic solutions and augmented reality solutions for the OR. Nice. So uh, that's impressive stuff. <laughs> um yeah I mean for me, you know, I've I've done this sort of stuff. Not not Blazer. Blazer I, I, I will be honest. Um I do not like Blazer right now. Um Nothing has won me over it yet. Um, but this seemed like a logical choice for using for um, a new .NET project. <laughs> um, and again, the intention is that, you know, people can contribute what they want. So if Deflux wants to prove me wrong and develop a, an alternative UI for this project, he's more than welcome to and then do the PR. So I do everything on stream for this project, right? So there is no... I don't go off and work on things off off stream. I don't tinker with this off stream. If you make a PR, the PR will be reviewed on stream. Um, you know, so as long as no one commits anything that's like, hey, I fixed it all for you, right? That's never acceptable because that's not what this is about. This is about learning and I can't learn if someone says, hey, I changed up everything, redesigned the entire application. It's now following this architecture and here's all the objects, right? That's not what this is about. Um, but yeah, that's the project is aimed at being very much stream friendly, um, on the, for the rest of the week. So tomorrow through Friday, um, I work on a larger project, which is more, uh, a passion project that I intend to make a product. So that is a, uh, agile project management platform. So that's using more technology, more advanced technologies. So that's using things like, um, mass transit um kafka um more mediator stuff more arch more architecture in general um but yeah this this is something that i've always wanted to do um and i've tried a few times on the stream because it's uh um it's not all going to change in done it nah i don't actually believe actually having a look more into that if they even get it into .NET 9, it won't be good and stable until 10. And even then, um, if they break APIs or they break anything around there, then I'm going to have some serious uh, questions. But it's something I have to keep an eye on because like you said, um, you know, introducing things like messaging, uh, message buses and stuff into the core framework, which I, I actually really disagree with think it's a poor choice um i'd rather see a clean implementation of new get packages that you can include as an option um then i would put it into the core framework but anyway so yeah okay well i am well over time for today um let's get that committed uh add endpoint for listing groups for the current user. 
So I'll commit and push that. Yeah, fortunately, the, um, my, my job doesn't like the idea of paying me when I'm not doing an intro or any work. I mean, it's a funny thing, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pull request for this. And I'm going to leave it until next time, right? So if anyone wants to review it, if anyone wants to take a look, you're more than welcome to. Um, if not, we'll start next stream, next uh, water drink, water stream, which will be next Monday now. <laughs> um, we'll start that with the, review, the code review of the PR, and then we'll uh, include that. But again, all PRs are reviewed on stream anyway. Um, and the reason I only do two days a week of this project for anyone interested is so that there is time in between the streams for anyone to go off and tinker, to do things, to add add things in. If I'm doing it every day, then I'm just going to like blitz through features and there's going to be nothing for people to do. So at least if I only do it for two days a week, we can use it for review. We can use it for me tinkering or adding things. And also I think that it's probably worthwhile in the near future to go through and add a bunch of features that if people are interested in contributing, you're more than welcome to go and do that. So, you know, there are things in the backlog now that, that will come once this is uh, added in there. But yeah, that, that'll be me for today unfortunately um i stream seven well nine eastern most uh most days um most monday to friday um tomorrow i'll be back with uh um online thank you very much for for hanging out i appreciate you um i don't think there's anyone that that is uh, new to you here um Actually, how many reviews we got? Yeah, so. Canny Dev, I, I was going to say, we're going to raid. So Canny is working on a uh, a game. Uh, Canny is awesome, like such a friendly, nice guy. Um, and uh, I would highly, he's, uh, he's working on C Sharp for the, I think it's his first time building a game with C Sharp. Oh, no. He's worked in Unity before, so he has worked with C Sharp before. He's using Godot and C Sharp, so we'll go right over to Canny. Um, I, I highly recommend giving him a follow if you haven't been there before. Um, Genicus, thank you very much. Um, thank you for the uh, the contribution. Thank you for the PR review. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, rejoin this next Monday. Tomorrow I'll be back on uh, main project um, where I do have some. Uh, architectural challenges to uh, overcome so thank you for joining me thank you for hanging out appreciate you all take care have a great rest of your day and i'll see you again soon bye all